Our top focus this morning is on the vaccine drive. There's been a lot of talk about the jab shortage that's crippled our vaccination program. And this is at the height of the second COVID wave. India Today has now scooped a report. This is of the Parliamentary Standing Committee that had in March suggested ramping up of the vaccine production capacity. This was after the panel was informed that there could be a shortage of jabs if it's opened beyond the priority groups, if it's made universal. Now, the recommendation was made by a 31-member committee chaired by a senior Congress leader, Jairam Ramesh. Reports uh, said that apart from suggesting the ramping up of vaccine production, the committee had also recommended to provide all research, laboratory infrastructure and capacity building support to the other vaccine candidates in the pipeline. The panel has as many as 14 members from the ruling BJP as well. Sources said that it was clear to the standing committee from the data presented by the government that the current production capacity is inadequate to meet the scale of demand. Meanwhile, Maharashtra and Delhi have both put up their hands saying that there's no co-vaccine available to vaccinate those between the ages of eight, 18 to 45. Delhi has accused the centre of partisan politics. The BJP, meanwhile, has hit back, saying multiple states are floating global tenders. Delhi is only casting aspersions at the centre to hide its own failure. So the centre and the states are fighting it out now, fighting each other when they really should be coming together to fight this virus and save people. It's the biggest weapon in the fight against the coronavirus. But for India, it is also proving to be the biggest challenge. Scaling up vaccination has hit a hurdle, with stocks running low. In the national capital, the stock of Covaxin for those between 18 to 45 years of age has completely finished. The Aam Aadmi Party government claims that 125 vaccination centres have been forced to shut down. The Delhi government has even released a letter from Bharat Biotech to the health secretary saying that it cannot make any additional supplies. साढ़े छह करोड़ वैक्सीन एक्सपोर्ट नहीं की गई होती, तो दिल्ली और मुंबई के एक-एक आदमी को दो-दो बार डबल डोज लग चुकी होती अब तक वैक्सीन की। मैं फिर से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा केंद्र सरकार से कि देश में राष्ट्र में इस समय जो संकट है उसकी गंभीरता को समझें, एक्सपोर्ट सारा बंद करें, मास the Delhi government claims that even COVID shield shots for those between 18 and 45 will only last three days at most. Grant ke roop mein, madad ke roop mein, aid ke roop mein, matr ek karod vaccine hi bheja gaya hai. Hum hisaab kitab mein bilkul nahi padna chaate hai. Hum agar kuch kehna chaate hai, toh keval haan jod ke kehna chaate hai, ki please let's not have politics and all this. और आज तथ्यों के साथ भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने विषय को रखा है अरविंद जी आप इसको समझिए और कृपया करके भ्रम मत फैलाइए महाराष्ट्र टू हैज स्टॉप्ड एडमिनिस्ट्रिंग कोवैक्सिन जास फॉर द एज ग्रुप ऑफ 18 टू 45 द स्टेट हैज डिसाइडेड टू प्रायोरिटाइज दोस अब 45 इयर्स ऑफ एज हु आर अवेटिंग देयर सेकंड डोज महाराष्ट्र हेल्थ मिनिस्टर सेज दैट द स्टेट नीड्स क्लोज टू 8 लाख डोजेस ऑफ कोवैक्सिन बट ओनली 35000 आर करेंटली अवेलेबल हर्षवर्धन जी को रात को बात की बहुत तफसील से बात हुई लेकिन सही में केंद्र सरकार के पास आज जो उपलब्धता नहीं है ऐसा उन्होंने मुझे कहा है और इसीलिए उनका भी यह कहना है कि दूसरा कोई चारा नहीं है इन इट्स डिफेंस कोवैक्सिन मेकर क्लेम्स दैट इट इज सप्लाइंग टू 18 स्टेट्स डायरेक्टली सिंस मे द फर्स्ट मीनवाइल स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स ऑफ कर्नाटक Andhra Pradesh and Odisha have also announced global tenders to seek vaccines. In the month of February, March and April, more than the domestic consumption, we had exported the vaccines. That is what we had done. Till, till April, our total exports of the vaccine were more than what we had consumed internally. So we had missed many trains. Centre has allocated 200 crores for scaling up vaccine manufacturing in the country. 
India will be producing 10 crore co-vaccine doses per month by the end of this year. While the centre has stepped up its effort to ramp up vaccine production, the opposition parties say it's a clear case of too little and too late. Centre's failure to timely invoke compulsory licensing has derailed India's vaccination drive and has added insult to injury of millions devastated by the virus. This is Anand Patel in New Delhi for India Today. Now, India is likely to be able to triple the average number of daily COVID-19 vaccinations that are currently being administered, and this is by July 2021. In a submission before the Supreme Court on May 9th, the government has said that the COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing capacity of India for three vaccines, Covishield, Covaxin, as well as Sputnik V, could cumulatively cross 14 crore doses a month by July 2021. On an average, this would suggest that the country will have the ability to administer 46 lakh jabs in a day. In a major boost for also the vaccination drive, kids between the age group of 2 to 18 also could very soon be eligible for the vaccine. Subject Expert Committee has recommended that Bharat Biotech be granted permission now to conduct phase 2 as well as phase 3 clinical trials of Covaxin on children from the ages of 2 to 18. As pediatric wards get crowded with young ones, one thing is very clear. The coronavirus is not leaving children unaffected. The second monster wave of COVID-19 is seeing more children get infected, even those less than five years old. And now, a vaccine for children could be the only ray of hope against the highly infectious variants. India's indigenous vaccine maker Bharat Biotech spoke in 2020 about developing a COVID-19 vaccine for children in India. But it is only now that the firm has obtained approval from the Indian drug regulator to proceed with trials. The secondary panel has given a green signal to Bharat Biotech to begin phase 2 and 3 clinical trials on children aged between 2 to 18 years, as experts weigh in on the need to now vaccinate children. Co vaccine may take time, but we should vaccinate this group as soon as possible to prevent the third wave. One. Second, why it is important? Because in pediatric age group, they, you cannot isolate them in room. You cannot confine them in room. Very soon they will be out to the schools. They can be super spread. They are very near and dear to the grandparents. So they can be very injurious. If they become contagion, they can be very injurious, very unsafe for the elderly. So we need to vaccinate them. As kids remain locked up in homes, the vaccine for children and adolescents could help return children safely back to schools. This is more to have a final, you know, uh, final fight against the COVID because children can be involved in, in, in transmission. And by doing so, we can safely open up our schools um, and, and the other activities which children have not been able to do, um, like, like camps and sports and other gatherings which they have not been able to do. So that will be a huge boost. Please give it to your children as and when uh, this is offered and the scientific world clears it off. <laughs> The US FDA has approved Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for children of 12 to 15 years of age. Pfizer has also asked the UK drug regulator to give a go-ahead to vaccinate the kids in UK. Even as Bharat Biotech has now been given permission by the SEC to begin trials, we'll still have to wait for at least several months before we could have a vaccine to protect children against the coronavirus. But experts have warned that the third wave, which is impending, could target children more than adults because estimates suggest that by such time, Many eligible adults would have at least taken one shot of the COVID-19 jab. 
which will make children and the younger population susceptible to getting infected, which is why vaccination for younger children is the need of the hour. In New Delhi, Milan Sharma for India Today. And expect big news coming in from the courts today because the Delhi court will be pronouncing its verdict on accused Navneet Kalra's anticipatory bail plea. The verdict is expected to come at around 10 this morning. Last evening, the additional sessions judge Sandeep Garg reserved the order of both the prosecution and defence at length. During the hearing, Kalra's lawyer made a shocking claim, saying that police personnel, politicians and judges were among those who had purchased oxygen concentrator units from Navneet Kalra. The oxygen crisis continues in several parts of the country. At the Goa Medical College, 26 people lost their lives due to an oxygen shortage. All of this happened within four hours and this is at a state-run hospital. The situation is so grim that the Goa Medical College has 700 beds but 1,000 COVID patients are accommodating them. Now the horror doesn't end here. On one oxygen cylinder, at least two to three patients are being treated, are being connected. The Goa Chief Minister said that oxygen shortage, however, didn't lead to any deaths. Here's a look at how negligence has weakened the fight of the tiny island against COVID-19. People lying on floors, being given oxygen, the space between beds taken up, the corridors too. This is the condition of the Goa Medical College, which has witnessed 26 deaths in one day, the 11th of May. When Goa Chief Minister Pramod Savant visited the hospital, people broke down. What could he do but promise to look into the tragedy? Regarding the oxygen, oxygen is a cylinder, Sangasar Ailao Prat Tanka Pawana, for priority to research. And exactly the oxygen is a cylinder, it is a many fold larger trolley. It is a very good detail. It is a very good history. It is a very good history. It is a very good history. The situation is grim in the coastal state. In just one of its hospitals, the Goa Medical College, there are 700 beds accommodating 1,000 COVID patients, a shortage of 300. On one oxygen cylinder, at least two to three patients remain connected. Looking at this dire situation, the Goa bench of the Bombay High Court has demanded answers from the state government. Ironically, the government says there's no shortage of oxygen. The Dean of the Goa Medical College has informed the court that they are not able to use high-flow nasal oxygen machines as it just does not seem right that one patient gets more oxygen while others don't. The hospital needs thousands of oxygen cylinders every day but gets only half. There are at least 72 trolleys of oxygen needed. Each trolley has 48 oxygen cylinders but only half are ever received. Patients on higher floors of the hospital building do not get oxygen properly as most are consumed in the lower floors. The situation is going out of control and the uh, situation has not just gone out of control, it has been just ignorance and negligence of uh, Mr. Pramod Sawant, Chief Minister of Goa and Mr. Uh, uh, Vishwajit Rani, Health Minister of Goa. Facility is not provided yet, but one thing about the doctor, sister, the medical staff is doing an excellent job. They are working for the day and night. The limited sources they have got, they are giving their 100% there. So we can't blame them on them. Because we have to give the government to the maximum of the government. We don't want to give the government 100% of the day. The court wants answers and fast. Upset with not getting any concrete solution, the court has said, Article 21 of the Constitution gives everyone a right to life. It's the duty of the state to protect it. It will be completely violated if people die due to lack of oxygen.
While the government says there's no lack of oxygen, the local Sikh community, famous for its oxygen langars across India, has a different tale to tell. हमारे पास में अभी उसको टाइम लग रहा है सोसेज के लिए और जितना हमारे से हो रहा है ऑक्सीजन सिलेंडर मिल नहीं रहा है हमारे पास सिलेंडर हमने रेडी रखा है मगर अभी ऑक्सीजन हमारे को भी नहीं मिल रहा हम दे रहे हैं हमारे सिलेंडर कुछ चल रहे हैं द गोवा गवर्नमेंट से इज दैट देर इज नो डर्थ ऑफ ऑक्सीजन वॉट देर फेसिंग इज लॉजिस्टिकल इशूज द हाई कोर्ट हैज ऑर्डर द अथॉरिटीज टू सेट टूगेदर एंड सॉर्ट आउट दिज इशूज एंड टू मेक श्योर दैट देर इज नो डेथ इन गोवा बिकॉज ऑफ डर्थ ऑफ ऑक्सीजन विथ हरीश वॉलविकर इन गोवा विद इन मुंबई फॉर इंडिया टूडे We've been getting in several reports about the plight of villagers about the situation in rural areas. Here's a look at what's happening in Uttar Pradesh's Itawa where the biggest hospital, the Bhimrao Ambedkar Hospital, has no doctors, has no sanitation workers and all bathrooms are locked. This is the biggest hospital in the district and it doesn't even have a BP machine. The horror doesn't end here. There are no restrictions in moving in and out of the covid ward as well. Preeti Chaudhary gets you this ground report. Uttar Pradesh's Etawa district has been reeling under a massive covid surge, largely rural. Most turn positive in the villages and by the time they make it to the city, they are what medical parlance suggests as serious. most are brought to the biggest district hospital here the bhimrao ambedkar hospital the 100 bedded covid ward here is a free for all no isolation no security just no one from the authorities especially no doctors and horrifying that there are no bathrooms ek to gramin logon ke liye dawa provide karaye dusra unko jo toilet bathroom hai wo provide karaye meri maa bp ke patient hai तो मैंने उनको कल परसों बोला भी था कि मुझे बीपी की उनकी दवाई देनी रहती है तो मैंने और डॉक्टर से कंसल्ट किया तो उन्होंने मुझसे बोला कि एक बार बीपी आप चेक करा के उनको दवाई दीजिएगा क्योंकि इस टाइम बहुत सारी ओवरडोज दवाइयां हो जाएंगी तो दिक्कत हो जाएगी तो मैंने पता किया तो यहाँ पे बोला गया कि यहाँ बीपी की मशीन नहीं है आठ दिन से पोछा नहीं लगा झाड़ू लगती है बिल्कुल साइड से वो भी बैठ के नीचे पोछा वो झाड़ू भी नहीं लगती है वो भी आप पैर से ऐसे बोलती है सामान ऐसे निकाल के बाहर दीजिए वी कुड वॉक इन इजिली no one stopped us and remember this is a covid ward we could only see attendants in charge all bathrooms were locked mounds of garbage lying inside the covid wards not a doctor in sight but too many angry attendants injection jab 20 bar ka ho tab lagane aate hain doctor wo bhi keh dete 8 baje ka time hai 8 baje aaungi aaunga aur beech mein koi subdha nahi koi kuch nahi hai yahan मदर को देखा है डॉक्टर ने अभी तक अभी एक आध बार जब बोला है तो आ जाते हैं नहीं तो अपने मन से कोई देखने नहीं आया बस मैंने रिपोर्ट दिखाई है तो उन्होंने दवाई बता दी ये खिलाओ पिलाओ आपको बता दिया हाँ तो हम वही लेके जा रहे हैं और जब दवाई लगाने के लिए बोलते हैं तो वो बोल देता उसके पास जाओ दूसरे के पास जाओ वो कहता उनके पास जाओ वन ऑफ द गार्ड डिड टेल सैनिटेशन स्टाफ इज रिफ्यूज टू वर्क इन दोविड वार्ड सो देर वॉज नो चॉइस बट टू लॉक अप दाथरूम जहाँ जाके क्लीनिंग करते हैं बर्तनों की हैंड वॉश करते हैं वहाँ पे गंद पड़ी है चारों तरफ वहाँ पे लोग टॉयलेट जा रहे हैं टॉयलेट जा रहे हैं सुविधा तो बिल्कुल नहीं है जो पेशेंट है किसी को लेटरिन की कोई व्यवस्था नहीं है पानी लेटरिन की कोई व्यवस्था नहीं है कोई लेटरिन नहीं अपना ले जाओ कितना ऐसे खुले में करवाते हैं खुले में खुले में करवाते इंडिया टूडे प्रीति चौधरी वॉज देर फॉर टू आवर्स एंड डिट सी एनी वन फ्रॉम दिनिस्ट्रेशन और इवन अ डॉक्टर I'm yet to see something like this. This is a COVID ward. It's supposed to be a high security protected COVID ward in Etawa. I have walked right in. People are lying right here. This is the entrance. There's no restroom. There is no bathroom for any of them to actually go. They are defecating outside wherever they find space. There is no doctor. I have now looked for at least 20 minutes here. There is no doctor. There are no nurses. They are each to their own. attendants are the ones who are managing the patients we did try to reach the district authorities after no response for a few hours we can now report that the uttar pradesh police has now taken cognizance of this report and promised action with preeti choudhary in itawa uttar pradesh bureau report india today An English teacher by profession, Datatriya Savant, drives an auto rickshaw by himself and provides a free ride to COVID-19 patients in Mumbai, 
while taking all precautions like wearing a PPE kit and also ensuring regular sanitization. This COVID hero is now being applauded. Here's a look at this report. The board on this auto rickshaw says COVID patients are held for free. The driver of this auto is Dattatre Savan. Savant is a teacher, but since schools have been shut for over a year due to the pandemic, he has taken to driving the auto full-time to make ends meet. In mid-April this year, he decided to put his auto rickshaw to good use, helping COVID patients reach hospitals. मेरे माँ की उम्र की औरत बीमार पड़ गई तो मेरे पास आ गई तब वो तीन चार गाड़ियों लोगों ने ना बोला तब मैंने बोला कि मैं आपको छोड़ देता हूँ तब मेरे मन में ख्याल आ गया कि ये उसकी जगह मैं होता ही नहीं माँ होती तो मुझे क्या होता When Savant gets a call for help, he wears his PPE suit, drives the patient to the hospital and then sanitizes his auto. हैंड सैनिटाइजर और दूसरा अंदर भी है वो लिक्विड होगा नहीं ये गाड़ी सैनिटाइज करने के लिए साथ साथ मैंने ये टेम्परेचर गन भी रखा है टेम्परेचर देखने के लिए ऑक्सीमीटर भी रखा है कि उसके सहायता से हम मेरा ऑक्सीमीटर यानी ऑक्सीजन लेवल चेक कर सकते हो कि नहीं तो कोई भी मेरे मन में डर ना रहा इसलिए सब मैं रखता हूँ बाद में किट का भी इस्तेमाल मैं करता हूँ जब कॉल आता है तब तुरंत किट पहन के उनके पास जाता हूँ in April, when the second wave ravaged through Mumbai, he helped transport two to three COVID patients in a single day. Now he says he gets a call on alternate days. Look, now the corona is going to go to the free, but after the corona, I have to say that at night, from 10 o'clock to 10 o'clock, 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 राइड करूंगा। पोस्ट कोविड, सावन प्लांस टू कीप हिज ऑटो रिक्शा एस ए फ्री एम्बुलेंस सर्विस। इंडिया टुडे सेल्यूट्स सावन फॉर हिज सेल्फलेस सर्विस। विद दिया इन मुंबई फॉर इंडिया टुडे। with that, I'm slipping into a short break here on First Up. As always, for all the top headlines that we're tracking this morning here on India Today, you can log on to our website, indiatoday.in. You can also download the India Today app.